we have all these symbols. We have fuses and, and the contactors and stuff. And as I said, this shows how it works. It doesn't show where anything is or, or like where the wires run. And, and in the case of these, uh, uh, the wires to the motors, they can be really long. They can be close up, you know, and, and, uh, or they can be far away. So what's happening here is we're, this machine runs on three phase, 230 volt power. So uh, we have a control transformer. And that's the symbol for a control transformer. And what the transformer does is it changes the the 220 volt or 230 volt power down to 120 volt power because we have uh, control devices that are 120 volts. Now you can see here that the control transformer has two fuses that are protecting its the the what they call the primary side, and then. It, the, the, this is shown going out, and you'll notice it says to page two. So that's actually going to, just check it to out. the next page, and that continues on here, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, we have the same thing, the power rails. This, is, this happens to be the 120 volt power, and we have fuses going to each thing, and we have an e-stop circuit, and uh, it, which is controlled by a relay, and so forth, right? Now, if we go back up to the first page, you'll notice that there, there's a contactor and the transformer is actually connected before the main contactor. That means that the, and the main contactor is what the e-stop controls. So every machine we build has a, a main contactor and that main contactor is controlled is uh, controlled by the e-stop buttons, and in the case of uh, the, we break this with 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 the e-stops, and and that turns off all the power. But you notice that it doesn't turn off the control transformer. And the reason is, the machines we build, they need to know where they are and what they're doing, and so the controls stay active even though the main contactor shuts off the, the power. Now, it, what's it shut off the power to? Well, the, the drawing, go, these three lines go down and then they loop up to here. You see the numbers are the same. And so it shuts off all of the VFDs and it's a, uh, there are other contacts on here and I'll show you a little further down and it shuts off everything that's an output Right, which means that things like valves and and uh, uh, or solenoids or stuff like that, they also go off. So in 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 doing safety, what we we do is we uh, try to break as much of the 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 things that are can turn on as possible. So we're shutting off the VFD's power. But what if this contactor failed? Well, in order to keep that from being a problem, we also break the outputs from the PLC that tell them to run. Wow. And that, so that's, that's where the, the safety gets complicated because there's a lot of redundancy involved. And so we break the, uh, the output power to things like valves and stuff like that. So on this job, uh, we, have, uh, we have solenoid valves running air and um, and that's pretty much the only thing we have besides motors. Uh, and then there's also the servos. So we break the power to the servos. Now, in, in the case here, uh, if we, you can see we have, can you scroll, scroll the screen up a little bit? Yeah, okay. You can see we have two power supplies for servos. So they come after the contactor. But if that contactor failed, these could still be energized. So the PLC control outputs that run the servo motors also get de-energized. So that's, and again, this drawing is, uh, this particular drawing is 17 pages and it shows how everything works. So you're gonna see as we go down further that there's breaks in, in, the, uh, in the power. So the one, we have one page that is essentially 
the, the 120 volt power. So can we go to the next one? your question? Yeah. So um, the brakes that you're talking about that, that break the signal to the VFDs and, and uh, the signal to the servos, that's happening through the PLC, I assume? Or is that physically happening? Like you're actually breaking the, the connection to the you know, the wire connection to this? Um, actually, within the program, the program shuts off outputs. And then we also cut the 24 volt DC power that feeds the output terminals of the PLC. But, so the e-stop is cutting, um, or the like, main contactor there that's cut by the e-stop is cutting power to all these things, but you're also cutting data some other way. Yes. Through the PLC, and, or does the contactor itself cut like the 24 volt? No, well, yes, the, 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 uh, the contactor itself cuts the 24 volts. Okay, so, so here's, here's the, the PLC we're using, and the, there are, yeah, there are inputs and outputs, and each one of them has uh, in the case of the inputs, we always leave the inputs on, right? And that's so that the machine, even though it's down and in an e-stop condition, I can see what what is going on. I can see the position of the servos. I can see that doors are closed or open or whatever. And so I can troubleshoot. Without the, the, the uh, inputs being on, troubleshooting would be impossible. You'd never be able to figure out why the e-stop is causing a problem, let's say. So, but the outputs now, each output has a common that supplies the power for the output to operate. And each of, uh, of these are uh, individually fused, but there's a main uh, contact that cuts off the power to all of them. So we can, uh, let, let's go to the next page, all right? And here, this again, we're in the 120 volt power and uh, we're, we're operating power supplies and you see none of the, this, this is the AC power uh, from the transformer that was in the previous page. So these are the things that run on 120 volt. Now you'll notice down here we have a UPS. So we've got the UPS plugged into a receptacle which is fed from the transformer and then the UPS creates power that is uninterruptible. So in other words, if we have a power failure, the, the one, this small amount of 120 volt power stays on. And the purpose of that is that in a, in a power failure, in the case of this machine, everything would lose position. And so when the power came back on, you'd have to rehome all the axes and, and take everything out of the machine and start it up again. So by keeping the power on, the machine still knows where it's at and can and can recover from that. Now, in the case of the plants I built before, which were waste treatment plants, we always had to keep uh, the input, all the the data working, so we could tell like, well, uh, there's no power at the plant, but and the tanks are half full, so we have you know 12 hours before we need to before we have a problem, and we can see the level coming up and know that we, we need to do something. So the UPS is primarily providing power to the PLC? Only to the PLC. Well, and well, so if there's a power failure, so it's taking in power from the 120 volt system to charge the batteries in the UPS, but the output is just supplying power to the PLC so that it knows where things are, even though there's no power to the motors and all that stuff. Right, right. So the PLC itself is aware that there's a power failure and it, it can then do something, you know, about it. It can make sure that, that uh, well, it can monitor what's going on yeah. is the idea, okay? So we have two power supplies here, or well, three actually. There's uh, one is dedicated to the servo motors because of noise issues. One is the controls for everything else. And then there's a uh, one for the HMI itself because the, for whatever reason, the HMIs have always been sensitive to power issues. So there's three, these are all DC power supplies, all right? They, they put out 24 volt DC, but they're used in different places. Now, so the important thing here is, you'll notice the numbers at, 
you know, you see 215, 216. My, my numbering scheme is that, and, and again, there's, there are lots of different ways of doing uh, wiring diagrams, lots of different schemes and lots of different symbols. And, and uh, some companies have some really amazing, uh, complex wiring diagrams. Um, I, I'm, I have tried to do this in a way that uh, things kind of look like what's in the panel. Uh, and, and so you can get a, a quick feel for it. So the power supply has just two terminals in and two terminals out, and that's what's shown. Now, the wire numbers, 215, 216, and they show going to the next page, and down here they go, show going to another page. Well, that's because, oh, and here you go. Here's, here's this main contactor number three, contact three. That's on the main contactor. That's the break of the power going to the servo controls. Okay, so in an e-stop, it cuts off the servo control power, right? Okay, so let's go down further, and here, we, here we're showing, this page just shows that uh, uh, the, the power to the PLC. Now, this is after the, the previous page. You can see it comes from, and then... You'll notice that it comes to the fuse here and the wire number changes to 300. And so everything on this page that originates on this page is a 300 number. Okay? And the 200 up here tells you, oh, that was on, that, that's actually coming from page two. So it's easy to keep track of where, where stuff comes from. All right. And so this is just showing the power to the PLC, which is on all the time. And you notice there's a, fuse, a, a single fuse at the top, and then more fuses down below. Now, th the first fuse in the loop here is always protection for the power supply. So this fuse is sized to handle the current that the power supply is rated for, okay? Now, if you add up the other fuses, they might add up to a number bigger than this, but that's perfectly normal because things aren't always on. And so as things go on and off, as long as they don't exceed the power here, everything's good, right? So it's the same as your household panel. If you look at your panel in your house and you have the 200 amp main breaker and you go adding up all the breakers in your panel, you'll say, whoa, wait a minute, it adds up to 500 amps. <laughs> well, yeah, that's perfectly fine, okay? Because, uh, because the, nothing, not not everything can can work at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the, the limiting factor is, is the main breaker. For, but the main breaker's job is to protect the bus of the panel, and and the wiring from the street to your into your house. That's what's protected by the main breaker. Then the, all the, the sub breakers protect everything within the house. Okay, so this is the exact same thing. And, uh, all right, so we have in every part, every circuit here, you're going to see there's always a, a first fuse. And so in wiring that, we come off the, you always feed the top of fuses. You never, ever feed power to the bottom of a fuse, all right? And that's a safety issue because everybody expects the power to be coming in the top and going out the bottom. And so most things are designed th that way. So, but this fuse, this is so the power comes in the top of this fuse, but it leaves the bottom of this fuse. And then it loops over to the top. So this is the top of the next fuse, right? Bottom of the fuse here, top of the fuse on this side. So that's how it, all right? So you'll see in our panel, where we have the first fuse in a row of fuses and the wire comes off that first fuse, off the bottom of it, loops underneath and comes back to the top to a whole row of fuses. Okay, so I just wanna, so Go even ahead. though it's drawn like it's coming in from the same side, physically in the in the box, you're saying the bottom will come out and go to the top of the next Yes. Side. Okay. Yes, again, schematic. Shows you how it works, doesn't show you how it's wired. I see. That, that's, that's why I'm saying there's a difference between a wiring diagram and a schematic. In the wiring diagram, they would show you that the wire was routed 
from one fuse and, and then to the top of the other fuses, but that's not how, that's not what a schematic does. A schematic's explanation is how it works, and that's what we're, we're seeing here. Okay, now you'll notice we have uh, a maintained e-stop here. Sometimes you have an electrically held e-stop, and sometimes you have a maintain. What's the difference? Well, in, in plants where they have machinery that is running and things like your lathe and your mills and stuff, they almost always use electrically held e-stops. There's a power failure, it drops out and nothing restarts. That's really common in industry. However, for a single device like this, the decision of whether to use a maintained you know, mechanically maintain where you pull the switch out and it's on is based on do I need to see the thing continue, you know, do I need to know what's going on or can, is it okay to hit the e-stop and shut everything off, all right? So like waste treatment plants, well, we, we never use an electrically held e-stop in a waste treatment plant because we need to know what's going on even if the power's off. And in the case of this machine, that we're working on. We have all these servo motors that have uh, encoders on them and we don't want to lose all the positions every time they, there's, a, there's a power failure. So, and then we have the backup of the uh, uh, UPS to keep it, keep it up even then. But it would be a real nuisance if the e-stop dropped out every time the power blipped.